the most dramatic interest rate tightening in history after a prolonged period of interest rates being at the lowest they'd ever been, set the stage for the demise of Silicon Valley and Signature Bank. Particularly with regards to Silicon Valley Bank, the critical mistake was believing that the Fed said what the Fed said in 2021, when Jerome Powell claimed that inflation would be transitory, and somehow they believed it. Since the 2008-2008 financial crisis, the Fed has consistently kept rates at or near zero. They finally started to bring them up ever so slightly, and but then COVID hit, and the Fed pushed them right back down. They proceeded to keep rates near zero throughout 2021, despite the government injection of trillions of dollars into the economy through multiple stimulus packages. The signs of inflation beginning to take hold were as plain as day. Low interest rates can spur economic activity and increase productivity, but they can also create a range of other problems, including inflation, economic inequality, and what's keenly important here, a desperate chase for yield. What I mean by a chase for yield is that when interest rates are so low, any risk-free asset such as money market accounts, treasury bonds, etc., has a return near zero. In 2021, banks were offering a 0.1% return to have money in the savings account. It was around 0.5% in a money market account. You might as well have stored your money under a mattress. Silicon Valley Bank was the go-to bank for tech startups and Silicon Valley firms um, who saw enormous co- booms during the COVID period. This led to massive increase in depositors for Silicon Valley Bank, and the bank's deposits went from $49 billion in 2018 to $102 billion in 2020, $189.2 billion in 2021, and peaked out at $198 billion. This is when Silicon Valley Bank made its big mistake. They chased yield. They bought $80 billion in mortgage-backed securities of over 10 years in duration with a weighted average yield of 1.56%. Now, they may sound low, but remember what options were available in 21 for low-risk bonds. So the returns of these low-risk assets were less than half of the market value. Needless to say, the value of such bonds plummeted. But there was one more key factor about these bonds, and that's what's so-called the held to maturity. The point of which is quite obviously they intended to hold it to maturity. But what this means in actual fact is that the bonds do not need to be revalued unless they are un- unless and until they are finally sold uh, for tax purposes. So thereby, Silicon Valley Bank was sitting on a huge pile of unrealized losses that amounted to a house of cards. Just look at their own report from 2021 before any gray clouds appeared on the horizon and see how many of these HTM bonds they were holding. That's according to an article from Seek- Seeking Alpha, by the way. Then in late 2022, the tech boom burst. Facebook laid off over 10,000 workers on two separate occasions. Amazon laid off 9,000 after having laid off 18,000 earlier. Twitter laid off almost 4,000, and a bunch of other tech firms did as well. The COVID-fueled tech boom is over, and thereby a tech-reliant bank saw significant pressure on its deposits. Adding to this, inflation is pinching people's savings and thereby diminishing bank deposits in general across across the playing field. Now, this pressure on Silicon Valley Bank's deposits required them to realize capital or raise capital, but selling them those HTM bonds forced them to realize that those unrealized losses, as once you sell it, you have to revalue the whole portfolio. And as one might expect, their, their investors had a don't panic call. And sure enough, it caused panic and a run on the bank ensued. Silicon Valley Bank, like virtually all banks, does fractional reserve banking, which means a bank does not need to hold all of the deposit it takes on hand, but only a fraction of them, usually 10%. It can land out the other 90%, and that's kind of their purpose. So for the example, if there's a 10% reserve and a bank holds $100 in deposits, they can make about $900 in loans. Thus, if everyone asks for their money back at the same time and they don't have it, the bank's going to collapse. Now, there have been many such bank runs in American history, but this is the most tragic, I would say. Signature Bank also had a whopping $762 million in unrealized losses from the same HTM bonds that sunk Silicon Valley Bank. But they also had some more obvious problems other than facing a criminal probe because they, uh, because something like 20% of Signature Bank's depositors were actually made up of crypto. Uh, which made them really particularly vulnerable at that point in time. Not to mention they're sitting on a stack of undervalued um, workforce housing, multifamily type projects that uh, basically just sunk in value. So anyway, hopefully this is the end of that series of events. 
and well, at least I sure hope so, and I'm sure you do too. Uh, if you're in need of an experienced commercial real estate broker, I can be reached at 281-222-0433. And uh, I appreciate your time. Hope you guys have a good day. Bye-bye.